Merry Christmas. Today's giveaway is crazy because it's Christmas and we love Christmas over here. Happy holidays to everybody else, but really it's about Christmas. Here's the giveaway. The Super Bundle. The Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Prime, and more stuff. I think there's more stuff in there. You get a bunch of free pro. It's the biggest bundle that we have. You get it for free, but you got to do the following. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, if we think it's the best comment, we'll notify you and you'll get everything that's included in the Super Bundle for free. Also, we're still doing the launch for MAPS Resistance. This is a new MAPS program designed for people who want to get started with resistance training. So if you're new to this or you haven't done it in a while, perfect program for you. If you have friends or family members that need to get started, it's the perfect program for them. But because it's launching and because it's for new people, we included a bunch of free stuff to really ensure people can have sustainable results. So with this launch, you get MAPS Resistance, which is actually three workouts in that program. Included is the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, two free eBooks written by Jason Phillips, so Macros Applied, Macros Explained, and a free year of access to our private form. So all that stuff is included. By the way, that, that would retail at like $320. You get all of it for $77 bucks right now. That promotion will end very, very soon. That launch is going to end soon. So if you're interested, head over to mapsresistance.com and then use this code, RESIST20. That's RESIST20 with no space for that massive discount and all those giveaways. All right, enjoy the show. All right, here is your Christmas Eve Fit tip, don't do cardio wow. until you figure out your calorie balance. Oh, okay. I was okay. like, what happened here? Yeah. So, Let's think about that for a second. This is, I brought this up on the show. Um, you mean like your maintenance caloric? That's right. Okay. Like, so it's the it's the last thing that I want to introduce to any client, no Bro, matter I what. I with that hat. It just makes me laugh right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just killing Every me. Every right time right makes now. a point, it like just jingles. What's around. wrong, Scrooge? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. Anti festive guy. It's you Christmas Eve right now. How could you not be Santa Claus out right now? All right, all right, all right. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, all right, sorry. Keep uh, going. So we're we're grinching it. All right, yeah. go for it. Bah, so humbug. so you're, you're talking about maintenance, like you're trying to figure out your maintenance calories. Do that before you. Well, jump, before, and I don't even, and I think you should, you should have introduced training consistently. I think you should have played with your diet up and down and uh, a while, and kind of have built some consistency around. Okay, I know that on average these days of the week. I burn about this much. My body needs about this much with no cardio involved whatsoever before you even think about introducing that into it. No matter what your goal is. I don't care even if your goal is just yeah. longevity, overall health, if you, and for sure if you are trying to burn body fat or build muscle to figure out your, your caloric maintenance without that introduced yeah. So into you have the your routine. home base established. Right. Now, is this, out. does yeah. this include like walking or you mean structured cardio? Structured cardio. Okay. And I, and <clears throat> now that's a big difference because, uh, you know, adding, you know, some walks throughout the day, very good for you. Very different than the structured form of cardio. Well, that's because I, with, with, Adding walks in the day, the idea of that concept of, you know, creating more movement and, you know, like we, you know, uh, advocate for 10 to 15 minute walks post eating and stuff like that. When we re when we recommend that, that isn't like, hey, just do that till you get to your goal. That's trying to get people to do that for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Where telling someone to get on a treadmill and get after it for an hour, uh, you know, first thing in the morning or at the end of the day for three times or five times a week. That is not uh, a realistic uh, thing for someone to do for the rest of their life. Now, uh, there, of course, there's exceptions to the rule. There's someone that's listening right now. I've been doing that for 15 years. I love it. Okay, they sound just like that too. Right. Okay. <laughs> good. Good for you. The rest of everybody else, though, mm -hmm. probably hates doing that. And before you get on it and decide you're going to use that as a method of burning more calories, you should have a very good grasp of what your body needs without it. And what it needs to, what it needs calorie wise to lose body fat potentially, without introducing it before you decide to introduce it into now, your. Now I'll go um, pro and then con. I think the pro is it's it's great because you want to know what your maintenance caloric um, balance is, I guess, so that when you add anything to it, now you know you're adding to whatever your body's burning. Um, and saving cardio as a secret weapon later on is really effective. I've done that also with clients before. I think it's really effective. Now, the con would be discouraging someone from, you know, in, just increasing their activity and they're like, well, I want to do it and I enjoy it. And some, you know, what I don't, what I think that maybe the potential con is that we may be talking people out of 
doing something that may be good for them. Agreed. So then mm. my my middle ground on that for that person is go for a walk then. Mm. You know, if you if you just you're motivated right now to move more, you recognize you have a very sedentary lifestyle. Maybe someone got you a Fitbit for Christmas this year. You put it on, realize your ass doesn't move more than a fucking thousand steps a day. Yeah, you should be moving. And I wouldn't tell that person don't move until you figure all this. Go ahead, okay, go ahead, go move. But again, be very careful with how you do that because if you are somebody who's extremely sedentary, you don't move more than five hundred to a thousand steps a day, and then you decide as your first plan of action is I'm going to get on the treadmill for an hour every single day. I don't think that's a smart strategy. That's like four times the movement you are consistently doing. And now you're going to just implement that into your routine. Yeah. Go for a walk. And then when you go try to, to cut calories to lose weight, uh, it's uh, it's a bit skewed, right? That's because, right. Yeah. Well, I think the, the, the biggest thing to focus on for most people's goals, which is weight loss, is to focus on getting the metabolic rate to increase on its own because that's a very sustainable approach, right? So if you you know build some muscle, that'll boost your metabolism. Cardiovascular activity doesn't really do that. In some cases, actually slows the met metabolism down. It's the opposite. Yeah. It's catabolic. Yeah, and 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 so it's not. It's manual. It's a manual form of calorie burn versus yeah. speeding up your metabolism. So. I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Well, you, in that context, well, though, let's talk a little bit yeah. why that is such a bad idea. Yeah. You, uh, we Okay, we've talked on the show many times that one of the, the first things that we do with a client, even if there's somebody who's 50, 100 pounds overweight, is to start to build their metabolism up. Well, i.e., that means increase calories and, and strength train. That doesn't mean also do cardio. And why wouldn't I also do cardio while doing that? Well, it's because it's a conflicting message. Mm. One of them is anabolic. One of them is catabolic. One of them is pro-building muscle. The other one is pro-breaking yeah. down. So I wouldn't want to try and compete with that originally. Yeah, this is, a, this is a very controversial subject because people misconstrue what you're saying as cardio is unhealthy. Right. It's not mm. true. What, what, uh, I think what we're saying is if your overall strategy is long-term success, the number one thing you should probably focus on is let's see if I can get my metabolism to burn more on its own. And what, what cardio does when it's done up by itself, especially with calorie restriction, is your body, and the studies support this, your body will pare muscle down to kind of offset that, that imbalance. And so you end up with a metabolism that's more efficient, which is slower. And again, there's a study from the modern hunter-gatherers that show just how efficient your metabolic rate can get. And by the way, I know somebody's going to get on, especially YouTube, and, oh, here's a study that shows that yeah. a pound of muscle only burns this much, and da, da, da. Okay. It's, it's far more complex than that. There's a range of calories that your body will burn with the current lean body mass that you have. Okay? So even without adding lean body mass or losing lean body mass, your body can become more or less efficient with your current lean body mass. Now, what moves it more or less efficient has to do with the signals you send it, how you feed your body, stress, lots of hormones, for example. For example, you could give someone uh, testosterone, who's have low testosterone, and you'll see a, a boost in metabolic rate. That happens before the boost in lean body mass tends to happen. You'll see it start to trend in that direction. So what you want to do is you want to get the metabolism to kind of move a little faster because if, a faster metabolism definitely was a liability 10,000 years ago. You don't want to have a fast metabolism when it was so hard to come by food. Today, it's the opposite. A fast metabolism is an asset. A slow metabolism is a liability. So it's a great strategy. And uh, I, don't, I mean, I've, I've done this before where I've taken a client, gotten them to lose 20 pounds, and they were eating more at the end of that journey right. than yeah. they were going into it, which it's usually not that way. Usually someone loses 30, 20 pounds or 30 pounds, and they're eating way less than they had to, than they started with, and now they're stuck with this kind of low calorie. Well, meeting. I like this advice uh, mainly because it's, it's contrary to what people think and um, a lot of times when I have uh, conversations with clients and their entire goal is weight loss, and I like to bring up their activity levels and just where they're at with that and, and getting them to figure that out as far as a lifestyle and addressing, you know, what their rituals are and what yeah. their entire day looks like versus like getting a uh, artificial uh, type of uh, manufactured way of moving, and, you know, in terms of that sticking within like your daily routine. It's so much easier. It's so much more effective, I found, with human behavior to find those those moments to just like stand more, to to just yeah. walk a little bit farther, like, and, and you just find like 
more of those type of uh, uh, approaches uh, throughout the day. Yep. Uh, it, it's just so much more of a, a winning strategy. And so I like to focus more on that because people aren't hearing that. It's definitely a winning strategy. This is, I mean, sometimes this science community is so stupid because we look at everything in this six week you know, study. So if you took these, if you took two people that were both need to lose the same weight, say, let's just say same everything, right? No, I love where you're going with this. I right. And you go that. and you let, and you say, all right, client A, we're doing cardio right out the gates. You're doing yeah. an hour every single day. Plus, plus cardio, some, plus weights. Yeah. Plus, plus weights. Plus they're going to, and then the other person I go, no cardio whatsoever. All we're going to focus on is building strength and muscle right now for the first six weeks. At the end of that six weeks, if, if their goal was ultimately to lose weight, the client that introduced cardio is going to win. Yeah. But the problem is life is longer than fucking six weeks. <laughs> yeah. So now let's take those exact same people and give me a year with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you the person that I spent the first six weeks focusing on building their metabolism, building muscle, not doing any cardio versus the person who was doing it right out gates. I'm going to, I'm going to whoop the shit here, out of that person. Here is all the, and I'm going to, yes. I'm going to eat more with this person. So they're going to be more satisfied yep. and they're going to get better results faster in a six month year time. So yeah. that's the reason why. This gets so, I think, so muddied up because there's these little studies that show stuff in a six week or maybe 12 week like time frame, which that doesn't that doesn't speak to life. No, and this is right. why the medical community will still recommend uh, liquid diets. You know, and this study showed, oh my oh, god, yeah. they lost the most amount yeah. of weight. So here's here's the 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 argument. And I'm so glad you positioned it that way. That's totally true. What we what we're talking about and what we always consider first is sustainability. We're not talking about just, uh, in other words, the context of effectiveness. When we talk about what's most effective, sustainability is at the top of the list. When you hear a bodybuilder or fitness influencer or fitness fanatic or scientist in this space talk about effectiveness, what they talk about is what's the most effective right now, right? Which one gets you to lose the most weight right now, right? And they don't consider sustainability. It's not a consideration. So yes, you, you're going to find YouTube ex bodybuilders and whatever you know get on. There's one guy in particular who likes to go on talk about how you know that's a bad message. A little short ex bodybuilder guy. Not going to say his name, but you know who he is now. And he likes to talk about this all the time. And the problem is he's con his context of effectiveness is not sustainability. Mm. His context of effectiveness is what he did as a bodybuilder, which is oh, in in 12 weeks you'll lose more weight. Well, yeah, it's true. But who cares? I don't care. I care about sustainability. And, and look, as a trainer who, who worked with just everyday average people all the time, the first five years of my career was the, my context of effectiveness was how fast can you lose the weight you know, in, in a short period of time. Later on, I had to go back and go, that was a complete, that, the way that I understood effectiveness was so wrong. I did none of my clients uh, It's because it was value. coming, just like this guy you're referring to, it's coming from the 1%. The perspective yeah. of the one percent. So the way I coach uh, competitors and talk to competitors totally different. is totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're the one percent. They're like they're that's their sport. They're fanatical about it. This is not a this isn't a matter of like sustainability. This is a matter of like I got this amount of time. Nobody cares. It's the show. After yeah. the show, do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. So like speaking to that, and that's so funny to me when you see these, you know, YouTube famous people that like people you're referring to that are giving advice to the masses. I've got a million plus subscribers paying attention to them. I guarantee the million plus people who are paying attention to them, 90% of them are not bodybuilders, yeah. are not competitors. They're average people looking for advice and they see this body that looks amazing uh -huh. and they and they aspire to look like that. And so they're taking the advice of this person. You know what it reminds me of? Yeah. It reminds me of, and there's a few people like this, like these, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, business influencers, right? How to make a lot of money influencers <laughs> or whatever. And they'll say charlatans. Things, yeah, and they'll say stuff like this: like, you just gotta grind all day long, barely sleep, work twenty four seven, make it. And there's like a small percentage of the population that can do that, like the twenty something year old, no kids, who's whatever. But to the average person listening to that, like, okay, uh, that's not gonna work. I can't do that. How long can I do that? Yeah. What kind of advice can you give me that's gonna help me with sustainable, you know, business success? Because that option I can do for sixty days, but then after that, it ain't it ain't gonna happen. It's the same thing with this. So if you have to consider, unless you don't, you're not thinking about long-term success. If you don't care, 
You're like, yeah. look, I want to get in shape for Vegas. Yeah, so then, your horse blinders on. You want to yeah. look a certain way and do it as quick as possible. We're not the show for you. Yeah, and then after that, I'm done. I don't care what happens after Vegas. I don't care what you know if my legs fall off or <laughs> yeah. I you know, gain 45 pounds. Yeah. Just get me in shape for Vegas, in which case I'll say, well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to handcuff you to the treadmill. <laughs> You're going to eat chicken breast and rice, and then oh, yeah. you know we're going to take all these drugs. Beat make the shit it, out of yourself. Make Go you look it. a particular way. So, so Hey, speaking of drugs, Adam, uh, <laughs> are you- <laughs> he Great transition to me. Hey. Hey, are you going to do another one? I know, I know, you got kind of shadow banned because you oh the said wine weed, weed wine. thing. But are you going to do it again? I see so many people watching it. It was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, it's still going. Actually, there's still a lot of people that are watching. Yeah, it's people are trying to get us to do it too. It's did on the mind. Well? I did. I did. Yeah, so I it's on like, the uh, mind pump uh, uh, page, not on your page. Yeah, yeah. So I got to tell you guys. I got. I'm going to share a story. I'm so. I, I'm going to apologize first, honey. Because I told her I wasn't going to tell this story, but I feel like it's too funny not to share with oh, you guys. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. So I have to, I have to tell you guys. I think it's it was fine. So uh, people that listen won't tell everybody. Yeah. So yeah, it'll, it'll yeah. stay in this. Oh room. no, yeah. she'll find out soon, as soon as she listens to this. I'm going to be in trouble, but I, it's just too good, right? And it's also I uh, endearing, maybe is the right word for it too. So it's funny and cute, but it's yeah. it's a, a bit endearing, right? That what happened, right? So I tell Katrina that we're doing this thing, right? So she's got. You know, it'd be those that have been following or or been listening to us for a long time know that she's not on social media. She's slow. Like, she don't even get half of it. Yeah. Like, she's so been disconnected from well, that what world. what motivated to begin with? Or am I derailing your story? Here? What would you say? What motivated you to do it to begin with? Because so many people ask us to, uh, yeah. you know, give a glimpse of them. I mean, if all you- of our spouses? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we've talked- Off air, we've all talked about this. But if you actually- And I didn't know this is possible. So if you Google something- and then whatever, a term, a name, and then you go scroll the very bottom. It's the most common search. Then you get the, yeah. the 10 most common searches attached to that. It's yeah. Adam's wife, Adam's girlfriend. Why is Adam's net Katrina. worth more than the rest of the guys? <laughs> 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 so literally like the top like four things attached to me. is no, While he's talking, I want you to look that up on Google for each of us. I want to see if they're all the same or yeah. different. I think, it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's skewed. Yeah. yeah. No, I think I, my, I don't think they've moved my net worth. So I've, and I've, I think we're a lot further Yeah, I want to see what it says. Adam Schaefer and then yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then Justin Andrews. And okay. So anyway, yeah, anyway, so I tell Katrina that, hey, Friday, I want to do this. I tell her I want to do this, this uh, you know, live Instagram thing where I answer questions. And she knows I do the question thing every week, yeah. right? And I said, but I want to in, uh, have you in there because everybody wants to meet you and they have questions for you. So I, I tell her this. And, you know, I said, we're going to have some wine, and smoke some weed, and we'll, we'll answer questions, stuff like that. So she's like, okay. So I tell her that early in the week. And I see on, on, on Friday, she comes home and I saw that she had bought some nice Rombauer wine. So she's all about it, right? So... Now our routine is this. So the, the time is 7.30 that we're gonna do this. Well, that's right about the time that we put Max down. And what our routine looks like is I get them ready, I get them up into the bath and get them started and stuff like that. And then I go back downstairs and kind of clean up from dinner while she's finishing him up with the bath and getting him ready to, to read to him and then put him, and then we read and put him down together. So she's been up there for the last, like, I don't know, 45 minutes with him bathing and stuff like that. And so I come up there because it's getting close. I'm getting like the set. We're going to sit outside by the fire and, and do this. And I come walking up and she's sitting down with him reading and she's like in leggings and a mini skirt. Her tits are all out, oh, wow. like done hair. I'm like, she's, I she's go, like, I'm going live. Bro, well, what I go, from me? well, no. So listen, so I go, honey, what are you doing? And she's <laughs> She's like, well, we have we have a date night tonight. No, what right? kind of a live event do you well, want to do? She, I go, I go. <laughs> we 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 have. A, she's like, we have a date night tonight, right? And I said, well, yeah, but I'm we're we're going live and I'm answering questions. She's like, well, I figured it's like our date thing, and you're just going to answer your questions while we sit oh, there. Oh, she didn't know the camera. Oh, she didn't, she didn't she just realize it's going to be live on camera. She thought I was just doing like the normal questions, and then people could ask her questions, and we could sit together. So she gets all done up for me that we're going to do this whole wine and smoke and everything like that. And she was so embarrassed because she, I mean, bro, she had like the the knee high stockings on. Oh, wow. that everything's wow, all pushed good, out and everything. Night. And I go, oh, honey, I appreciate this so much. I said, but I don't think. You want it. People Here's are gonna be, a sweater. and I'm in like in hoodie. I'm in a hoodie yeah. and a beanie and stuff like that, and I'm all comfied out. And then she got all sexy and stuff like that. And so she oh, had to man. go Dude, run, run easily. The easily could have tripped the views out. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say, yeah. What are you trying to do? I, she, know. I thought you thought, I thought you focused more, on the uh, business followers. Oh, uh, I'm sure there's been there have been plenty of people that would appreciate it, but I know she would have been embarrassed because yeah. she didn't think you surprise that, her. Boom, uh, camera. I know. Yeah. There, there's a little bit of me that kind of thought like, oh, this would be funny. I'm not even gonna tell her, and then we'll do it. I was like, I gotta tell her because she'll feel so. 
joke. That's like, do you guys have an out? Like, do you guys have a something that you? Because women are good at this, right? They, and men are visual creatures, but you know they'll know what to put on to get you kind of like, oh my god. Do you guys have anything like that that works for your wives? If yeah, you yeah. put something, you do. Yeah, yeah. gray sweats. Yeah. Oh, what the gray is, sweat. Dude. Yeah. What is it with that? Because you could see all the detail it's, in gray for sweats. For some reason, the shadows. I don't know. It just plays into that. You know what? Do you know some... that I actually didn't know that was a thing? Neither did me, I. Yeah, me either. So okay, I didn't know that was a thing. Like um, this is like ten years ago. Okay, and I used to teach boot camp class in your gray sweats. <laughs> in my gray sweats all the time, and it was your actually attendance was it was amazing. actually yeah, it was <laughs> actually Katrina who like called me out on it one day. It's like. <laughs> You know you use your whole gray sweat thing just to keep your attendance yeah. up all the time like that. I'm like, what do you? Hey, you we're gonna get better at it this. It totally like, went over. We got the new mind pump gray sweats coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it totally went over my head. Yeah. I didn't. Re- I never is put this it together. Why your class was always like, Adam, demonstrate the burpees and jumping jacks again. Yeah. We don't know how to. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, this is your. Yeah, yeah, you guys have been here yeah, for yeah, years, yeah, but yeah, here, yeah. here. And it then is. for Christmas, they all buy me boxers all the time. Yeah. 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 Hip thrusts. Couldn't for days put it together. Had no idea what was going on. You know what's so funny? This is what I had no idea about. So I learned that about right around the same time, about ten years ago. Up until then, I did not know. Like, I knew that it, like women checked men out, right? But I didn't know women looked at dudes in like, their junk, right in the junk. Like, I did not know that that was like a thing. Junk. Like, because women aren't su- supposedly supposed to be. Because well, like, that's not where we look first. I mean, unless you have other preferences. But yeah. I, what do you mean? Hoo ha? Huh? I'm just saying. Are you a hoo ha <laughs> checker? A guy that looks there first. You got a different preference. Are you a hoo ha checker? On a woman or a guy? No, no, on a guy. Well, yeah. No, oh, check out. oh, I thought you were. I thought I just said an obvious thing. My yeah. bad. <laughs> Jeez, you, you guys get all confused. He's all I do is this. Justin's there. like, look. Uh, when I look at a guy, I look at a smile. I, yeah, I look at exactly. Well, <laughs> then I look. At, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, look I look at, at his, his broad shoulders. Yeah, I, look at his, I look at his calves. I don't look at his dick. Say, that's me. Okay, for being honest, I look at his calves first, yeah. then his smile. But I'm you're struggling with. But I had no idea. <laughs> Would you see on me first, Justin? Yeah. Can you tell me that what you I, noticed first? I saw your cheesy smile. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I I, did not know that you know women were like that. I guess, I, mean, what, I guess this is pretty naive, but I don't know women were looking at dudes in their junk right away. Yeah. That's hilarious. I think me. it's different for each. So I, I've heard some women say it's their arms first. Some will say smile. See, I think they're some lying say smi- Oh, you think so? Well, no, I, I think they're lying. Because there's a thing about baseball pants. I hope some ladies back me up on this, but the, yeah. there's a whole thing with that. Like I remember it was just like neck turning stuff when the guys would walk by in baseball. Oh paint. yeah, because yeah. yeah. Also the uniform thing though. Yeah, that's a big well, one that too. too. Yeah, a man in any, uniform. Any uniform. Is, There's got to be even some, if it's a janitorial. Uh, it was that like outfit. an authoritarian <laughs> thing. What is that? There's got to be something evolutionary uh, about it. Custodian outfit. And I, I'm thinking, is it because it shows exactly like authority or that you're that you belong to a group? I don't have no idea what the hell it is with. With uniforms, I have no idea. Gray yeah. sweats, I guess it shows more. But how does gray sweats show more than other colors? Is it the color yeah, that shows? The yeah, it, it has something to do with the co- shadow. It has to, it has to do with the color. Like the black just kind of like piece. all blends in, so it, it's yeah. it's less. Um, yeah, because I, po- I, I posted a picture once on on the story. You know, some every once in a while I post a flexing picture and I had gray sweats on immediately. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Immediately, Jessica's like, "Oh, you got your gray sweats on." It was like the on. YouTube back when we did those videos, and we like were sponsored by Viore, and so we started wearing all of those like uh, sweats. The gray sweats, and I would get those comments every now. I didn't even think of that. Oh like, yeah, yeah it's just, it's just <laughs> that's like, hilarious. Okay, yeah, I guess this is what everybody's paying attention to. Yeah. Now, are you guys good about so when 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 the wives do things like this? Like, are you okay? And be honest here. Are you are you guys the good husband that like you know when the wife gets her hair cut or when she does her nails or when she notices? When she, yeah, and you say something. Oh, we I notice. I was uh, gonna say we notice because I know you. Have I usually do misses, that just out of like I, you notice Justin misses. I know. I know that's how. It goes. That's oh, not true. No. Yesterday, hold on. Was it yesterday? The day before, Katrina comes in. Yeah. And Justin's like, oh, I do you're... that to get Adam in trouble. Yeah, that's the only reason. Hey, he just, hey, he just throws it me. out. Yeah, he, like, oh my hey, god, you did. did something with your he's hair. With, yeah, your hair. Yeah. That's what you said yeah. about her hair yeah, or, or yeah. nails or something like that. And she's like, thanks for noticing, yeah, Justin. I'm so glad somebody noticed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Adam needs to work. Bro, on I, that. There, I yeah. just saw a comedian do a stand up on this, and I think I thought it was so good. It was so accurate, and he was making fun of like when girls come home and they have their hair done. And he was like, oh, my God, the the quarter of an inch that they took off. Because like yeah. that's what it is. Like, she goes and gets her hair done, and she's like, you didn't even say anything. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it's kind of the same. Yeah. She's like, you can't tell this is, like, one and a half shades lighter and that I dropped, yeah. I n- took a quarter of an inch off. Yeah. Like That's why you just say color. Wow. Okay, like, so. That colors. You know what, though? To, just walk away. To, <laughs> ma- to man's defense, have you guys ever seen these those color charts where they'll show different varying degrees of colors? And women are far better at determining different subtle shade differences, whereas men are not. So they definitely do notice 
shit like that. Is that Much like more. the extra? Remember that thing that went viral a few years ago? The blue dress. If it was a blue dress, no, or that was gold, different. What What was that? Do you remember that exercise? I, I think remember. All Andrew, you know what I'm talking details. about? Yeah, I don't. It was like it was. It was like egg. that had some, that was something else. That was uh, something to do with uh, how we process. Yeah, like certain people saw like two distinct different colors, right? I do think women see like more of, like shades of color. They than do. Men. No, no, that's a fact. Yeah. That, and, and the theory is, evolutionarily speaking, as gatherers. They would see that's your theory. No, that's the current. <laughs> that's that's your the theory. prevailing. Theory. All right, if bro. you say it enough times on the podcast, it becomes a real theory. We're gonna we're gonna look it up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I've shared your. I think it's a brilliant theory. I, mean, I think it makes I, logical I, sense. It does. Like I tell the story all. I steal your story all the time about how when we go look for things in the. No, in no, the, no, that's the, that's that's my theory. I'm talking specifically. Oh, about isn't noticing, that what you're saying? Yeah, no, I'm talking specifically about noticing uh, different shades of colors. Be, and the theory is that women are we're it's better like, at determining if a fruit or food was either edible or poisonous or or bad. This is also why they get hypersensitive to smell when they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. So because it's better safe than sorry, so they'll not eat something that potentially we'll go more could for be, the sweet than the yes the that could sour, be poisonous. So they become super hypersensitive and things just make them nauseous because that's that better safe than sorry. Oh, okay. You know, theory. I thought you were blending your theory in there with the no no the, that's the other one I made up the I, mustard that we can't find in the in the refrigerator yeah, theory it has nothing to do with being lazy. There's something it's, there though, dude. There, there is something, there. something there. there. It's just it literally yeah. happened to me last night. I can't again. see shit, dude. Sometimes I just can't. I it's went in not, there. It's right in front of me. I went in there last night to give Mozzie a uh, a Benadryl allergies are kicking up and stuff like that and i must have been in there for like 15 honey are you sure the benadryl are we out of benadryl no it's in there Ugh. i'm looking everywhere check the shelf behind them and i mean and, and i i had that moment too of like where she talks shit to me like about you're that like, you're like, like, so i'm like gonna find so it i'm aggressively in there you know moving yeah. things like we don't normally do and i'm like it is fucking not here so i go running out there i said honey it's not here i think we're out you need to order some she walks in there five minutes later walks out with benadryl like, I swear to God. Wait, wait, wait. Hold I on. swear to God, I looked everywhere. Hold on a second. Hold on. But second. what I believe is she doesn't. She puts things. I was in, just gonna say she puts things in weird places that don't make. Like here's all the medicine. Yes. So I'm checking all around Reach. there. And then it was you know in a jar over here. Well, or yeah. hold on yeah. a second. Did yeah. you see her find it? No, I didn't. Okay, she, maybe she brought it with her. I think they do that knew. too. Yeah, I think they do that. <laughs> they just create rules. I, do. I dude, think they like, do that. I think they, here, I think they do this here. just to fuck with me. Why does it fucking go there? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's so way fun. too far away. You know, like it would make more sense here, but no. no. I don't even care, and I don't want to argue because I don't. I am not going to organize stuff. You guys have seen how I organize things. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. You, I'll put it where you want. I'll take you a back seat. You manage this. You're way better than I am at this stuff. So, so. I'm more that way at our house. Like I, I like everything to have its place. Like we literally just built, we just bought this new thing for like for the front door and it has like a, you open it up and you can sit on it and shoes and stuff. And it's, I've now designated as, I told Katrina, I said, she's like, where's my computer bag? Where's the mail that I just, I said, so that thing is now become my spot where I put your shit that you don't have a place for. So if you don't, if you have not designated <laughs> yeah. a place for it, I'm piling everything in that. In it's that a just, junk box? Yeah, it's a junk box yeah. until you can give me a place yeah. to put, because I was like, listen, tops you've got all this covers. We got, free. Our place has so much storage. We have empty cupboards at our place. So I'm like. Just tell me. I'll put it away for you. Just say, this is where I want mail to go. This is where I want when I bring home some weird face cream stuff. This is where I want my computer stuff to go. And I'll put it there. Yeah. But you guys got to yeah. designate a spot. No, so, so, no, Jessica organizes everything. But here's the only challenge I have. She reorganizes everything <laughs> She often. changes it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll Whoa, open a drawer and it's just mental. all of a sudden it's empty. And I have a moment of questioning myself did like, i do that yeah no not that but like did i forget Has it always been this way i'm often forgetful right so i'll open it and be like uh now i'm embarrassed i'm like wait, oh i reorganize everything i'm like this is the third time in the last two months what's going on anyway yeah. I, I was gonna tell you brought up your son maybe remind some, uh, remember something yesterday so this is the thing that i get uh, kids do i forgot but my son jessica's out with him in the backyard and uh she turns around for two seconds go back around and he's eating dirt he decided that he was going to eat some So, dirt. you know, what is it? So, some, like, uh, we were so blown away that Max... And he got so mad. When so, she Max took is not one of those kids. Like, and it's like hitting... It's like a 50-50 thing. Like, if your kid eats dirt or not, right? Because <laughs> he grew know. up on the beach. Know, yeah. And that was like... Katrina right away was just like, oh, I'm so... Like, don't let him put his hand in those. And he just never did. And he still, to this day, is not... He's, he doesn't eat dirt. 
but some kids like that's like go to as soon as they can grab it they put it in their mouth some kids just love to get in it you know yeah. like, smear it on themselves that that's like you. yeah that's me and that's my youngest but yeah ethan's not like that at all he's like super clean and just like you I, well know, it's, cautious. Pa- it's partially how they explore so textures and yeah you know, tasting trying to figure yeah, out yeah it but it's just funny to me because like the fastest thing in the world is a one-year-old trying to put something in his mouth that when you're when you turn around you ever do that oh, with dude. it they grab something they see you looking at them whoop, yeah, yeah. real quick stuff it in my face yeah yeah she goes over and she tries to like open his little little and by the way a one-year-old's grip dude, is keep insanely strong toes, huh? oh and so she's like opening his little hand a little dirt coming out like, ah! <laughs> so <laughs> i got i got i got a, a dad situation to run by you guys and uh, so i've i've got my first um you know mother-in-law hurdle right Uh-oh. so and i mean i anticipate this continues as as raising the children happens right <laughs> Well, and, first you had the the haircut thing that you worked through. Yeah, right. So that was like the first first hurdle. Here's here's the next one, and my mother in law doesn't even know this because I don't even like, like. Do I just chalk this up to the game and just not worry about this and get fr- frustrated with it? So last night, my son is like, I swear, he's I'm so blessed. He's such a good kid. He's he's fairly easy, as easy as having a child can be. And uh, when we did all the Christmas stuff, like. He knows it's like it looks to him like more like decor. Like so, we we've had our Christmas presents out and under the tree for weeks now, and he doesn't mess with them. He he'll come over presents and he'll touch them and look at them and ooh we'll do that, but he doesn't try and rip them open. He totally listens, right? So the last like fucking three days, he's all of a sudden one open him to the point where when I tell him no, he throws a little bit of a tantrum. He cries and he gets daddy oh daddy I'm like, <laughs> I'm like max we gotta wait chris i know i want to open them too and i'm and i'm like i look at katrina and i go <clears throat> why is he all of a sudden sort of she goes well my mom every time i've been taking her house has been letting him open a present every time oh, he comes over yeah, so for the last three weeks he's visited his, his nana and every time he comes over there she gives in and lets him open a present he's opening other people's <laughs> presents even because she wants to be able to let him open it every fucking time he comes over there oh. so now he's trained that when he comes in the house and sees presents he can open them and i couldn't for the life of me figure oh, out man. what the fuck happened because just like a month ago this kid didn't care about it wasn't touching. now all of a sudden like we're having like full-on breakdowns wow. of crying because i won't let him open it and i'm like what is wrong with you son you've never you haven't acted like this and then katrina finally breaks down and goes yeah well my mom has been letting him open presents i'm like like what do you mean presents like oh well every time i drop him off she says that he wants to open it so he she lets him open it Oh motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> so, Grandparents, dude, dude, they break they, all the they rules. They do this. They yeah. like they, yeah. they 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 drop a bomb and then they leave. And then yeah. They leave. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, I just let him have a Sunday. You know, it's ten o'clock at night. I know. Oh, but here you go. Yeah, I know. It's you know, it's a tough one because part of it is like they have their own. They, you want them to have their own relationship with their you know grandparents and aunts and uncles. The other side of you is like, well, respect what well, we like to do. So it's like it's a give and take. I don't like, want to rob her of her joy, right? And, and also, I, the, and also his his joy with his, you know, because right. Okay, here's the deal. I think back because I I was very close to my grandparents uh, growing up, and a lot of people weren't, so they might not understand this, but I was, and there were definitely special things that I did with my grandparents that I didn't do with my parents, and it became mm-hmm. this thing. Like, and it wasn't. I, I I know my parents wouldn't allow me to do the same stuff. But it became like this, like my grandmother, and this may be an Italian thing, I don't know. She used to like to sneak us money. So she would hand us money like it was a drug deal. Like she'd be, and she'd go like this, like, shh, don't tell your mom. Dude, it was what, a funny thing. You know? Isn't oh, there, yeah, a, isn't there a, um, a meme that went viral yes. of that where they're like, the, where the grandma, because my grandma used to do this too, where she yeah. folded up real small yeah. and she hands it okay, to you. So you had a good relationship with your grandma. Yeah, yeah. My grandma okay. and I were really tight like so this. Think about she used the, to do this for Think me. about the stuff that you do with your grandma that your mom and dad would have never done. Yeah. And it kind of made a special. Totally. Yeah. And it's, in my opinion, there's it's give or take. Some stuff's not worth it. Like Dude, like my oh, I let your kids let me smoke a cigar, and I was like nine years old. What? Yeah, so like that's crossing the line. <laughs> <laughs> that might be crossing the line. That's, that's just a little bit crossing the line. I was like line. hanging out with him and his friends at the pool hall. I be- I believe my my love language was developed because of my grandmother. Uh, so my love language is is material things, and every time I see my grandma in a material world, stupid, <laughs> <laughs> every time I see my grandmother, she took us shopping. Which you talk about what my parents would yeah. drive my parents crazy was that any time I I saw her. That was the th- she took me right away. Took me to go shopping for clothes, toys, whatever, and that was like I, f- I got spoiled every time I visit her. Yeah. But that also turned. It, I, I always felt like I was so of ever all my family members, right? Parents, aunts, uncles, everyone, my grandmother. I felt the most loved from, oh. and so I it molded how but I. But you think know what's I, funny I, though? I, I'll ask you this. She did that. 
but that's not the main reason why you felt loved by her. I'm no, assuming. of course. Yeah. So you, but you also connected. <laughs> yeah, it all I together connected that as right because yeah, it wasn't like our whole yeah. time together was. Shopping. You know what's funny about that generation? Like Justin, you said your grandfather had you smoke a cigar when you were nine. That generation was so different. <laughs> my grandfather so would take my cousin and I. So we're the same age. My cousin Sepp and me are about the same age. Mm -hmm. He would take us in the room when we were like nine or ten, and he'd say, "Come here, come here." Try this, try this. And it would, he'd give us a shot glass and he would put a little bit of grappa in there, which is like whiskey, that'll burn your face when you're nine. Grappa, <laughs> what are you doing? No, no, that's bad. It's like gasoline. Yes. And you would give it to us a little bit and he'd say, go ahead, taste it. And I'd be like, I'd look around like, I don't know, I don't know if I want. Come on, do it. It'll put hair in your chest. Yeah. And then I'd do that it. That was like, always the thing. Yeah. And he'd start laughing. Oh, you're going to make you a man. And you put it away. This is like what my grandpa <laughs> would say to us yeah, when man. we were little. He's going to put hair in your chest. It's so, it's so hilarious. Helicopter like, parents, man. heads exploding right now. Back. Oh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Hey, I want to bring something up uh, before I forget, Adam, uh, yeah. especially you, because I know you were in this industry. The California weed industry. Are you, oh. are you, are you reading what's going on right now? Uh, I am. I tend to stay pretty current. What are you referring to right now? What's okay, so so this is very interesting now. And we called this. We called this when it, you know things were starting to get legalized in California. And w and what we said was, that's great. But if they overregulate and overtax it, they're going to maintain a very vibrant oh, yeah. black market. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure enough, the the dispensary industry, the leaders of California dispensaries or whatever have written a, a big letter to uh, Gavin Newsom, who's the worst uh, governor of all time. They sent it to him and they said, "Amen. hey, um, our industry is on the verge of collapse. I've laid off half of my people. He, he said, they said 75% of the weed in our industry is being sold uh, illegally yep. because the taxes that you guys are charging are so high that it's it, we can't compete with that market. <clears throat> so what they're asking for is like a like a holiday on the taxes on it or in a reduction. But this just goes to show, like, you can legalize something, regulate it so hard that you still keep the black market going crazy. I mean, I, I, need for people it. ask all the time where I, I get my my stuff from, and it's, I don't get it from the clubs because the best stuff doesn't make it to the clubs. Hmm. There's still a demand on yeah. the black market to pay a premium for that, and that premium- Is cheaper. Yeah, is cheaper or about the same price that you'll pay for the, the best top shelf stuff in a club. And so people are just like, why even? So you, it's created this this still vibrant black market because, of, and I remember when I was there, I don't know what I don't know what the taxing looks like, but boy, we had to pay like tax, 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 uh, like I think like three yep. different taxes like on a transaction. So yep. it was crazy, it was like a total of, of like 20 something percent. In taxes, it's just and ridiculous. then they, on top of it, they pass something like you have to grow your own yes. supply and you have to do it like all this. in house. And they regulate the crap out of it. And what that does, I, Milton Friedman a long time ago said, it's it, the dumbest thing ever because now you have to be a master grower and producer in addition to somebody. It's just it's better to yeah. keep those separate. There's farmers that have been doing this forever that you should allow to do their job and be good at it and then let distributors and people that are running clubs do their job, which is operating yeah. a business. Milton Friedman said a long time ago that from a business perspective, the war on drugs literally is to protect the drug cartels and their profits because mm. it doesn't allow legal competition. So, and to give you a good example of this, I don't remember, the, who was the guy's, what was the guy's name who was in New York City he was selling um, cigarettes on the black market because that's mm -hmm. a vibrant black market in New York mm -hmm. City. And then remember the remember cops took that, him down yeah. and he died or whatever from- Beverly you know. Hills cop. No. Eddie was, Murphy. <laughs> no. Did that happen? In, <laughs> that part one. Oh, you don't yeah. remember that? No. That's how it opens. The opening scene on Beverly Hills Cop 1 is oh, yeah. Eddie Murphy is undercover yeah. and he is selling crates of cigarettes oh, in New York. Wow. I do uh, now. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Remember that's, that's the opening scene and then the truck takes off and he's wow. fine. Well, anyway, so, great so in New York City, there's a vibrant black market for cigarettes because they've done the same thing. Still. They've, they've taxed the shit out of cigarettes. So stupid. So that's something you have to consider. If you want to legalize something and, and also reduce the black, because black market, one of the, the big challenges of the black market is disputes can't be handled legally, so they tend to be dis handled violently, right? So if you steal from me or whatever, I can't take it to court because it's a black market. So we're going to handle it, just you and I, and then quality control and all that stuff, right? So this is a big issue. You, you know, so the we'll interesting, it would be interesting to see good stats on this. I bet you the black market, okay, with all the cannabis clubs, okay, that are now all over the country and, and doing business and being taxed on, 
I would predict that the black market is no smaller today on marijuana than it was 10 it's years ago. It's just organized differently. Mm, yes, I right. agree. Mm -hmm. And I, I think all it really did was introduce people who weren't going to smoke weed ever or thought it was yeah. taboo Maybe. or thought it was bad. What about so that's Colorado, who's going, though? That's like, who, what about Colorado? Well, just uh, in terms of their their economy there with 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 cannabis, it, it like it's pretty. It seems pretty. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what their tax. They were taxing. They were on like that, one but. of the first to 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 legalize and to organize yeah. and to get the, and well, get the state more it involved more, with coming yeah. in. And I don't know what they're, I don't know how they organize it there, but I do know that still black market. There, what though, politi yeah. what politicians oh, sure. will do is that they'll look at a market, and if it's considered like a bad, you know, quote unquote bad activity, then they have carte blanche to tax the shit out of it, right? Because oh, it's weed. So we're going to tax the hell out of it, right? Oh, it's cigarettes. We're going to tax the hell out of it. Oh, it's sugary sodas. We're going to tax the hell out of it. And the way they, they they back it up is by saying, well, this is something that is bad, right? So, but what they don't, what doesn't happen or what people don't realize is the unintended consequences often result in a worse outcome, right? So what's the outcome here in California is that the black market remains strong or stronger, and uh, that's not a good thing. We still have a huge black market now. So for. when I was involved in the clubs, it was very common practice, okay, for these club owners to be running uh, a legitimate business where they, but uh, being taxed with that, totally. but, but basically using it as a front to be doing all of this backdoor business illegally. Yep. Mm. Shipping across to other states, maybe even doing other drugs that aren't legal yet. So they were, they use, they, they don't care the business. There's more profits there, right? <laughs> And so I was, the, I was in this to try and legitimize it with my well, buddies. Especially because we they wouldn't let you put the money in your bank. Yeah. Yeah, that was a huge problem. Yeah. So it's like, here, any of the you guys money. work in cash. Yeah, what are you like, going to do? You can't just keep stuffing it under your mattress. Yeah. yeah, and then it made it made guys like like us who was were trying to do it legitimately really difficult because then those guys could undercut prices. So they would do prices that I mean I'm I'm running the books at our place, so I'm like doing the math like okay you're paying this from a farmer you're getting taxed at this much you have it's possible it's not possible I'm like you can't do that you can't price there's no way and they kept everyone start price gouging just to be just to get the most foot traffic to come through their place so then they could do other stuff I see. So that became a race to the bottom, and no one gave a shit about the the business actually being that profitable. So nobody because was profitable they, legitimately. Because exactly. So I mean, that's that's been one of the biggest challenges with with this this whole industry as that it's grown. Sense. It's also a big reason why I wanted out of it. I was just like, this is stupid, and that's why I left the the clubs to get into the growing side because that that was a little more streamlined. At that time, yeah, at that time it was a little yeah. more streamlined and free. You could go get your license, and I, at that time I could distribute to any club so long as. I I, I have you, follow the rules. Have you guys ever seen the, uh, there's a, you can actually look this up. There's numbers that show that there's a certain amount of revenue that the government will collect when they raise taxes, but then past a certain point, they don't collect anymore. Because what happens is they'll raise taxes, revenue will go up, then they'll keep re raising them. Economy doesn't grow as much. So although it's a greater percentage of the revenue that's the, of the, the economy, because the economy shrank, they actually bring in less. And then you'll see in other cases, they'll cut taxes. What is If it grows the economy, they actually collect more money. That number is called something, that hmm. sweet spot. I don't remember. There's, I don't a, remember. there's yeah. a term for There's a really good guy that um, I wish I, you just reminded me um, of an incredible interview that Patrick Bet David did. And he did it with this like... I believe he was uh, was uh, Clinton and Bush's and like a couple mm -hmm. presidents, uh, e like economists, and he's a CPA, mm -hmm. and he talks all about this. God, I'll look it up, so hopefully I can add it to the show notes, but you just okay. reminded me, well, and he talks about that. By the way, speaking of taxes, Elon Musk is going to pay $11 billion. 11? It's up from eight. I saw eight. It's 11? $11 billion. Is it like a record? Yeah, ever. Ever, right? Yeah. So how does that- By the okay, way, so Elizabeth I, Warren called him a freeloader. <laughs> I can't Imagine believe the I cannot the irony there. I don't understand people who who buy into that. Yeah, but you, you know have what, to be though? insane. She walked into a fucking buzzsaw he because he he straight I just, dropped. I'm the mic baffled on her. that people like okay, so uh, you know these politicians that are their net worth. Like you just look look at all the politicians like what their net oh. worth is, oh. right? And, and look at like a Pelosi. Like how the hell are you that wealthy? It's uh -oh. crazy. You have to, me, to ask It's crazy to me that they're even allowed to trade. Oh, dude. Did you see, dude, the, did you see, did you see what's coming out? What? Yeah, they're talk doing, about that Twitter page. So, they're, so oh, I'll get there too. So they're investigating trades that politicians and people in the know, uh, because for some reason they don't get scrutinized by the SEC like other people do, right? So, so weird. So politicians- It's not weird. Who it's, oversee, it's, they oversee legislation on markets, oversee legislation on companies, and then they'll make <laughs> trades based off of those. 
There was one federal judge who 130, made- 130, I saw that. Yes. Like 130 cases yes. that he was involved in. Yes. He now had there was trades a, on. Now trip off this. That's insane. It's, <laughs> and politicians do this all the time. And so, and Pelosi's well known for it. It's There's other politicians. Fuck, By the way, it's it not is. a Democrat thing. It's a Republican. It's just people in power. Yeah, I know I know. Paul was- uh, uh, He did something. He, he did didn't some, disclose after yeah, like whatever. 16 months or something. It's- crazy and this should not be allowed because it compl it totally will influence now the, the way that they make what, what doesn't make sense to me because exactly. the president can't do that only person he's yeah the yeah. president can't do that he's got to put any sort of like holdings and stuff he has it has to go into like a blind trust yeah. okay yep. if i understand it correctly yep so the thing that doesn't make sense to me is why why aren't all politicians under that same who passes those laws you gotta be a special yeah, kind of moron to think that i mean i get it right? i get why well, i get making i get why they're all in on it and why left or right doesn't want to pass that because that's one of the best ways they can all make money i mean i think that's the i think that's the reason why we might not ever see that pass because everybody knows these fuckers don't make a lot of money for their date their nine to five no I mean, what's just, the salary for, for the power the it's influence, terrible and then it's like 250 yeah. a year yeah Getting which, which i shouldn't say terrible like 250 is groups. terrible but i mean if no, you're terrible a, if okay it doesn't make sense is what you should say yeah they're worth some of them are worth 50 million dollars yes. you've been making two hundred thousand dollars a year yeah like you ain't gonna save 50 million dollars there was a okay so here along are you looking up the average congressman's uh, salary could be yeah, oh. 174,000. It's even less, dude. It's even less. Yeah, yeah, 174 a year, and they're all they're all multi multi millionaires. Now, now yeah. Justin said something that really. So, for people who don't think social media is in the bag for uh, for politicians, here's your evidence right here. There was this Twitter page that that uh, following Pelosi. It po all, what it did is it said she it. it said she's the best trader of all time, and they showed <laughs> how how yeah. like on the point all her trades are, yeah. and so all they did was highlight her trade so people could follow them, Twitter blocked the account. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's Imagine crazy. if you're going into a casino and you have that kind of winning percentage. Like, the pit boss is all over you, dude. It's throwing you out and, like, breaking your hands. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> all right. Speaking of winning, I know we're supposed to mention uh, Viore today. I do want to say, if you look them up and you type in news, Viore, they are consistently listed as one of the fastest-growing uh, straight to consumer companies, They're, as one of the the fastest growing athleisure wear companies, they have gone from zero to a hundred yeah. in such a fast period of time. I can't even believe it. It's one of the most exciting companies I've, I've ever seen. Like they're like, growing so fast. They went from nobody knows them. How oh you're going to try and compete with whatever with Lulu and whatever to they are now trendsetters in yeah. that space. It's I'm, insane. I'm so I'm so proud of us on that. Fine, the fact yeah. that we've been rocking with them for over four years now, yeah. and they've been a partner of ours. And to see them have that kind of, they might be. When I look at our, you know, portfolio of partners, they probably are one of the biggest ones that have grown since we've been hooked up with oh them. Oh my God. They, they grew so much. They, what, what was the valuation? What did Joe say to us? Was two two billion. Uh, now, it, yeah, yeah, two, and I think when we four. started, they were under a hundred. Oh yeah, they were under a hundred million. I remember uh, him first disclosing their sales with us when we first got started, and they were under a hundred million. And so they just they're, now they're in the billions. By the way, what are you doing with the ripstop pants? You keep talking about tapering. Them oh, so Justin's wearing them right now, right? Yeah, yeah. so do I. So I these are the. Oh, you are so. These are not my favorite pants that they have. These are but my, you don't like these? Who's it, so comfy? Though? Who's the name of the guy that you introduced us to? You, you he was at the Christmas party and he's done some design work for us. You were working on the bags with him. Jason is that his name? Jesse. 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 Jesse thank Jesse, you. Jesse. Yeah. So the Dickinson. first time we met Jesse, mm -hmm. we it's met Jesse. You, you invited him up to uh, the Truckee house and he and he shows up and I never met him before this time and he's wearing Viore pants. But they're they're cuffed at the bottom and they look like the ripstop. And I'm like, yo, where did you get those? Like I have all I have all of Yuri stuff and I've never seen those. Those are sick. And he's like, oh, these are the ripstops. But I went and took them to my tailor and I got them. I got elastic put in the bottoms, so they're they're tapered and cuffed. Yeah. So I was like, no way. And he's I was like, how much you pay that? And he's like, oh, it was like five or ten bucks. So I went and took mine because I never wear them. I don't like how they're open at the bottom. And I got them all cuffed for like five or ten bucks. It's not like they're baggy at the bottom. Yeah, but I I still like the he likes I them all like tight though. Like, yeah, yeah, that's like the show that's, that's, yeah, that's exactly. more the style. The you want style. you want people to see your ankle tattoo? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You you it makes look real close for that butterfly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> just, hey, <laughs> another company I want to bring. It's another company we work with. So remember how we talked about Luna? Um, I think we did a whole episode. We did with the physical therapist. Yeah, and how I brought up how it should be normalized that women get physical therapy postpartum. Mm -hmm. The DMs I got from therapists that specialize on this were incredible. I had one lady send me and she goes, uh, DM me and she says, 
I'm so glad you brought that up because it's still not accepted. And she said 100% one of the most valuable things a woman can do postpartum is do uh, physical therapy specifically for being postpartum, like working on the pelvic floor. Dude, it's so crazy that you wouldn't consider that because it's it, it's such a, a you know journey, a traumatic journey on the body to go through that. And oh. like to, to be able to recover from that is, you know, getting help in that direction would be huge. Oh, pelvic floor issues postpartum are super common. And if you don't address them and fix them, they stay with you. They can stay with you for a long time. And then they can cause dysfunction and other things. So like common symptom, like, oh, I can't hold my pee in, or I can't control those muscles, or I lose core stability, um, or back pain, which is very common. Um, of course, diastasis recti, which is something different. So she's like, oh, yeah. She goes, it would make it makes such a huge difference when a woman sees me postpartum and I can do certain, you know, specific, because it's very specific. It's not like you're just training them. Right. It's very, very specific. And then the part that she was excited about, she's like, I wasn't familiar with Luna. She was, I think it's brilliant because one of the reasons why women don't get therapy postpartum is no, most moms don't want to part with their baby and go to a, a clinic yeah. to go meet with a therapist. She goes, the no, fact that brilliant. they could go to someone's house, she said is absolutely brilliant. So talk about a company that's exploding. Doug, what is our, what, what are our rules uh, as investors on what we can share like when when like when they send their like quarterly updates to us so that are we allowed we to could, no i don't think so are we not allowed to share that depends it depends on the company right if they if they want us to i thought I like that when you're when you're an investor and you know so i don't oh. know how many total are now in investors in luna we get our like quarterly updates and that's like a private email that gives you the inner workings of like the growth and the success is that, is that uh, public honestly, information or is that? On, well, it's obviously not public because it's a private it's company. Private company yeah. So, yeah. I would say that we probably shouldn't share it simply because that's their information. Yeah, better to err on the side uh, yeah. of, of being of being. I, I, I don't know if it's a problem. No, we can't just, share this. They are exploding. Well, yeah, I know. That's what I, I, it'd be nice to share with our audience, like the the I growth, do, the like growth like that we've seen, the growth, yeah, the real yeah. number growth that we've seen in the just the last I, I six can't, months that we've been. I tied can't in see with how the they won't completely overturn the industry. There's no, there is. They're I can't already think, doing it. There is, I can't. They're think a giant in the making. There is sure. not a single like negative. At well, all. We almost, we almost. I can at least say this, right? We almost doubled the valuation on from the time we got invested in, which was six less than six months ago. Yeah. I mean that's crazy. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they were already uh, oh north of a hundred million dollar company. So just yep. to see double growth in months time, mm -hmm. it's on a rocket ship right now. So it's Wild. yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to see it. Really, I mean, I I knew it was going to be a big deal when I had told my buddy about it who was in, in physical therapy, and he had no clue about it. And then literally like weeks later, he called me like, bro. Luna came in and actually did a whole presentation. <laughs> He's like, holy shit. I'm like, yeah, dude, this thing is going to disrupt this space totally. completely. All right, speaking of health, I got to bring something up, which is kind of interesting. So there's been some studies done on the COVID-19 spike protein, right? So everybody knows about the spike protein because that's right. what the vaccines are based off of. And it's what houses the virus. And it's, it's what causes it to stick to certain cells in the body or whatever. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, researchers have found a concerning link between certain heart cells and the spike protein of you know SARS-CoV-2, which is COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So the spike protein appears to change cells in the small blood vessels around the heart, disrupting their regular function. So this was presented at the European Society of Cardiology of Congress, and they show that the spike protein binds to cells called uh, parasitites, or parasites, I think, or paras parasitites. I don't know how to pronounce it right. It's P-E-R-I-C-Y-T-E-S. Parasitites? Now, here's my issue with that. Okay. The spike protein is not just present in the COVID-19 virus. It's also what we put in the vaccines, mm -hmm. which may be why the vaccines have been observed in, in some cases to cause heart inflammation or issues related to that. So that spike protein itself, which we, the site, which pharmaceutical companies were really smart and they did have a very short period of time. They had to find something that they could designed their vaccine around that would work. They chose the spike protein and it was almost unanimous. Like you look at all the competing pharma companies, they all chose this spike protein. This is what we got to base it off of. But now what we're finding is the spike protein itself by itself causes issues. Of course, the virus also causes even more issues. So then the question is, if you have a bad reaction to the vaccine, does that mean you would have gotten a worse reaction to the virus, which is a lot of people... Talk it about, seems but. like at least it would be a similar reaction. Yes, very from, from interesting, right? So yeah. it's it's crazy because it's that protein by itself 
that ca- can cause issues separately from the virus, which also causes its own issues. Yeah. So we'll see what ends up what we end up figuring out later on. From so all I like this. to wait for more data to come out. Did you it's watch wild. the All In podcast where they talked about what's what's happening though? Since the uh, the RNA protein that you're talking about, the all that research is now there's there's connecting it to some positive things that may help cancer. Have you? Oh seen? oh, that technology. The technology is huge. Well, yeah. and and so remarkable. The, the, that may be the silver lining in this whole you yeah, know push right. on the vaccine so fast as it pushed a lot of things forward yeah, they're definitely innovating a lot of uh, new methods of I mean, treatment if you look at the technology behind mrna vaccines <clears throat> the promise is incredible like there is uh, almost endless uh range of things that you could prevent or treat from this technology because you're technically like manipulating someone's dna code right is that a simple a simple somewhat. way of saying it, it? it i mean it's it's not quite but somewhat right and so what that allows you to do is it allows you to produce targeted, uh, you know, antibodies for specific, you know, diseases or viruses or illnesses or <laughs> cancers even. So the the it's the potential is massive. Now that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but the potential is massive. Yeah, super fascinating that when you see this stuff happening, and then when we talk to like Zbiotics and what they're doing with GMO, like just with GMO bacteria, like. What's coming in the next ten years is going to be really interesting. What we're going to be able we to do. are about to enter into two radical um, shifts in medicine. One is that the ability to uh, you know modify certain genes to do kind of what we want, which the again the potential could be endless there. And then the second revolution is going to be in uh, mental health with the research that's coming out with psychedelic research. Mm-hmm. So you're, I mean, you're right. We could in the next 15 to 20 years, enter into a new era of medicine where we solve problems that were, you know, before were almost unsolvable, maybe treatable to a low, you know, low degree, but not solvable. Exciting. Hey, look, uh, life is too short to suffer from digestive issues and digestive issues become more common during the holiday season. Did you know consuming good enzymes, digestive enzymes, right? Well-made digestive enzymes can help with your digestion, especially if you eat a high protein diet. Now you may be thinking, where do I get these enzymes from? Not all companies are the same. Some are better than others. Our favorite is Masszymes, actually specialized in digestive enzymes for fitness people or people who eat high protein diets or diets that help them with their fitness, getting lean, improving the strength and improving the performance. So these are for performance-minded individuals. They're very effective. I use them and I love them. So if you're interested, head over to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. Our first caller is Daniel from Georgia. What's going on, Daniel? How can we help you? Hey guys. Um, first off, thanks for having me on. So um, high level overview sort of headline here is how do I increase my VO2 max while having a nuclear metabolism and not sacrificing gains? So uh, the context here, like I grew up, Sal, probably very similar to you, like long distance runner, very skinny, like strong wind. There goes Dan. Um, And found strength training and was able to pack on a bunch of muscle. And now I've been going through MAPS anabolic, which is awesome. Um, But I've worn a like wrist worn heart rate monitor for the last seven years, whether it's Fitbit or Garmin or whoop or whatever. Um, and I've noticed with weight gain and strength gains via two max going down and resting heart rate going up and trending in a way that I, I don't like. So I'm curious if you guys have any tips or tricks on how to do that while not sacrificing you know, mass and strength gains in the gym. Dan, any, any particular reason, uh, why you want other than just, you know, you know, having a, a better VO two max is, do you have anything specific? Why, why you want to uh, improve that? Uh, no, it's more of just like a longevity thing. Like a big fan of like Dr. Peter Atia and, and some of his research on VO two max being a, a sort of all cause mortality reduction and closely followed by strength. So, um, want to make sure that I can, you know, be capable in any scenario that I encounter. Got it. Um, but there, I, I'm not like a professional athlete or anything. I, okay. I Didn't you poke holes the other day in the Peter? Yeah, thing? Didn't we talk it was about a that? little extreme. But you know, okay, here's the deal. You, you like you said something that I I, I like. You want to be ready for whatever, right? So you kind of want to be fit overall. 
you're noticing that you're losing some stamina because you're not focusing on it. That's totally normal. And you don't want to lose your gains or do too much to the point where you start to lose muscle and strength. Your best bet is, uh, you know, sprints or sprint type activities. So you could do like high intensity interval training style workouts a couple days a week will do a good job of maintaining a decent VO2 max, but it's more like resistance training than long distance steady state type cardio uh, type training. So sprints are really good on a on a, a bike or hills. on yeah on at on hills or running um, intervals with a jump rope where you're doing lots of speed or intervals on a rower. These are short bouts. The total session would be 20 minutes maybe or 30 minutes at the most with these bouts of you know maximal exertion for 30 seconds and then you slow down and wait for your heart rate to drop back down and then repeat it. And that's this is a great way to build stamina in a way that is more muscle friendly than, you know, doing, you know, an hour or more of kind of steady state uh, type of training. I, I want to point out too that uh, increasing your VO2 max is something you could do pretty quick too though. So like it responds real quick. Yeah, like in a week. So you you could literally improve it that fast. So there, I, I see lots of different things that we can do here. We can take the advice that you're saying, Sal, or you can interrupt your strength training every four weeks or so with a, a week of, you know, really pushing on the cardio and trying to get the VO2 back up. I mean, there's nothing that says that he's not going to lose all his muscle in one week, no. you know, so you're not going to, it's not going to, and it'll probably benefit you somewhat in your strength training. So if you just want to, so I, I don't do anything. I don't, I'm not like this, uh, hard up on my VO2 max, but this is, I, I'll run the mile and I, I am probably not as frequent as every month, but I like to get on there every couple months to make sure I can do it. And that's, and all I, all I'm really trying to do is to say, Hey, I, I want to be able to, if I need to turn it on for a mile, I can get after it and keep my mile time under say, you know, eight minutes in and, case the and, coppers get you. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, no, I mean, actually for the exact reason that Daniel's saying, like, I, yeah. I, I agree. I want, um, you know, I, I want to be able to still get up there and, and move and do those things. I think it, there's tremendous benefit as we age to still be able to do that stuff. And I just don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also care more about being stronger and building muscle. And, and, and I tend to lean more that way. But then what I'll do is I'll just, you know, every month, month or two, get on there and make sure that I can get that mile time under under eight minutes. If I can't, then, you know, for a week or so, I'll, I'll train it, get after it and get it back down. Yeah, I always consider this, too, just for athletic purposes and wanting to move uh, quickly and, and to be able to maintain that ability. So that's something I'll cycle this back in. And um, to Sal's point, doing a little bit more anaerobic type cardio uh, where I'm doing it in bursts uh, because it's... To me, it's always translated more to uh, things that I'm more interested in doing and, and um, you know, having those abilities to be more explosive. I want to train that. So um, and it will help, you know, in terms of like increasing that VO2 max, uh, you'll get the benefit of that as well. You know, it's a great program, Daniel. I know you're doing MAPS Anabolic, but have you tried MAPS Strong? Uh, I haven't yet. Yeah. No, Dude, work, work sessions are amazing. MAPS Strong is incredible. The work sessions are uh, are focused on improving your work capacity and there's carries and sleds and you're doing, okay. you know, AMRAP session. I mean, it'll get your, it definitely gets your heart rate up. I loved that program. Um, and okay. remember, consider, you know, when we wrote the program with Robert Oberst, he said, there's a, there's somewhat of a stamina component in, in a high level strongman competition. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, if you go in there and you're super strong, like a power lift, you get your ass kicked. If you don't have some athleticism and some, and some stamina, I, I, Map Strong, this work sessions are incredible, and they're along the lines of kind of what I'm recommending, except they're they're structured and they're programmed. So if you don't if you if you don't have that program, we'll send it to you. If you do, try it out. I think you'll really like it. What I love about it is just people don't really consider that. It's this is such usable endurance and, and usable cardiovascular effort. Like when you're carrying things, like you you have that kind of stamina you need, you know, for everyday activities. And it, it definitely has this massive carryover uh, for everything else just functionally throughout the day. Yeah, that would be, I, I've got anabolic and performance and aesthetics. I, strong is like the only one I don't have, but um, you got no, it now. It we'll, we'll send it, it over to you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Boom. No problem. Thanks for calling Daniel. Yeah, that uh, I like, you know, I mean, okay. So when it comes to training, of course, there's specific skills you can train for. And then there's specific, I guess, aesthetic goals and longevity goals. And when it comes to like you, like Justin was saying, like usable stamina, 
the explosive kind of higher intensity stamina tends to be more usable in everyday life when you really need it, o aside from being able to walk, right? So if you can walk good distances, that's probably mm -hmm. pretty usable. Uh, the sled, heavy carries, sprints have always given me a tremendous amount of return. And, and, they, and they've really never, I mean, you can overdo anything, right? But they've never taken away from my strength or muscle gains. And in fact, oftentimes they actually contribute uh, to the strength of muscle gains simultaneously while I'm building stamina uh, in those things. Yeah, and, and just in terms of like doing cardio and like going long distances, like it's just there's a lot less opportunity for that. Now, I know a lot of people like their days are just crammed with a million different uh, activities and work related items. And so to be able to kind of be efficient with that, but also have a lot of like cardiovascular carryover doing work sessions to me makes the most sense. I'd be really curious to see uh, some studies or research around. You know, if you actually just ran a mile every day before your workout and you, it's less than eight minutes right? and you just keep that mile time low. So, you know, you can do it and, you know, maybe and obviously improve on it if you're doing it every single day. That's not going to hinder you building much muscle. I mean, eight minutes or less. Well, especially when you get to the point where you're really, you're conditioned. And right. Used to you're it conditioned and, and you can, you can run that mile. And it's just more health focused. Yeah. Really. And, the, and yeah. I think that's his main, that's what I got from this, right? Yeah. So he, he listened to Peter Tia and him talk about all the research around, you know, having, yeah. in, having improved VO2 max. Hey, run a mile every day. Run a mile every day before your training, uh, your training and keep that mile time down. And I'm sure that you're gonna, your VO2 max will be in a very good place for overall longevity. It'll probably carry over into your training and support that and only make you better at your workouts. Yeah, you know, other things that are overlooked are like um, complexes, three exercises put together. They used to call these giant sets in bodybuilding, but, or, or even one, like you do barbell squats at a relatively high intensity for 20 reps with a 45 second rest yeah, in between sets. Well be your heart's going to be screaming. Oh yeah, you do five sets of that and you're 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 done, right? And you're going to get a lot of work capacity or you you string together three exercises that are somewhat difficult, of course maintain good form. You're going to get a decent amount of stamina. Now you're not going to get that long endurance type of stamina which, you know, if that's your goal and you want to train that way, but in terms of the health effects you don't need. You can do those kind of shorter bursts of anaerobic activity and get quite a bit. Our next caller is Tony from Georgia. Tony, what's happening? How can we help you? I'm doing pretty good, Sal. Um, um, just a quick, a quick background. Um, I'm 48. I lost about 120 pounds over the last uh, two years, roughly. Wow, that's um, great. I started with doing a keto diet, intermittent fasting, um, and then about six months after that. I started the Body for Life program um, with, a, with, with for about six months. Um, the next six months, I did a lot of running. And then I went in and got a DEXA scan and saw that my metabolic rate, my base metabolic rate was like 1,400 calories a day base. Um, and I just realized I needed to start adding uh, muscle, other types of things to my body. So, and so... I started the five by five program um, probably uh, six months or so ago, and that worked really well. I was able to put 10 pounds of muscle on and lose five pounds of fat over the last six months or so. Um, but I'm just wondering, how long does it take to rebuild your me base metabolic rate back to something reasonable? I've heard the podcast you recently did on uh, like 100 uh, people on how to help them lose 100 pounds, mm -hmm. and uh, I know I did it all wrong. And I'm trying to get it right now. So I'm just wondering what that rebuilding process looks like and the amount of time it takes. Yeah, that's a good question. All right, so little recap, right? You lost 120 pounds, which is a significant amount of body fat. So first off, congratulations. There's, that's no easy feat. And then I, I don't know if you said this part, but I see it in the written uh, question that you sent that you, now you've got your metabolic rate up to 1,600 calories. So you've rose it by about 200 calories. Is that correct? Yeah, between May and October, it moved from 14 to 16. Okay, so let, let me put that into perspective Pretty for you. Pretty damn good. Yeah, let me put that in perspective for you, because I know this is a, is a it seems like a long process. You've been at this now for a while, since the beginning of your weight loss journey. But to put that in perspective, 200 calories is a good, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour of cardio every single day. So essentially what you've done from May to October has gotten your body to burn the equivalent of about 45 to an minutes to 60 minutes of cardio every single day. So I know it doesn't sound like much because it's 200 calories, 
But that's a great, that's a nice jump. 200 calories on its own, right? You're not doing anything extra. It's just burning those extra calories. So you're on the right track. Now, how long is this going to take? Boy, that's a that's a tough question to ask. But I, I do want you to understand this, that, uh, and there's some theories that surround this, that maybe the central nervous system has a memory of a person in, in terms of uh, how many calories they were burning before or what, it, what they had to do to lose weight and where they were for a long period of time. And so it may take a little while, but you're going to be trending up that entire time. So it may take a year or two years uh, or three years even, I doubt, but even to get to the point where you're like, man, my metabolism is, is roaring and I feel good and everything's you know where I want it to be. But consider how long you were in the other state uh, and what you might have done. You said you did a lot of things wrong. What you did to lose that weight in the first place. But here's the good news. Three years from now is going to be here anyway, right? So you could either be three years from now with a metabolism that's burning, you know, 2,500 calories, or you could be where you were before or have progressed nowhere at all. So the good news is it's going to trend. It's going to continue to slowly trend in that direction. Um, it, the bad news, it might take a while, but once you're there, man, it's so much easier to maintain. So Stay the course, okay? Stay the course. Allow your body to get comfortable with what's going on, to put its guard down, if you will, to speed up its metabolism. Because remember, your body your body doesn't necessarily want a faster metabolism because it's always ready for the next famine or the next time that you're going to consume a few calories and overwork yourself or whatever. So give yourself a little bit of time. And in, in, in my advice is to enjoy this process because if you're counting the days – it's going to feel so much longer than it's, than it's actually going to be. Well, there's a couple of things uh, I want to address and ask. So first question I have for you, Tony, is uh, if I had a client that uh, hired me right now after they, they accomplished what they did at, at your age, that much weight loss, the thing I would ask you uh, to get your blood work done, I'd be curious to see uh, where your hormone levels are. Have you done that uh, any time recently? I started actually with um, a functional medicine doctor. Oh, I don't recall actually, and it was under the guidance of the first six months of that doctor. I thought it was going to be an important thing to do Smart. Um, for any number of reasons. However, I don't ever recall having my hormones included in those panels of tests. Yeah. So that would be one thing that I would I would, I would would love for you to do is I would you know, say, hey, go get your blood work. And, and if you don't know this, we have a free form that we now have uh, called M M or Mind Pump Hormones. It's on Facebook. Uh, we have two doctors that are in there that are constantly answering questions. Uh, they go on twice a month live and answer all your questions. It's absolutely for free. It's something that we're providing for our audience. So I would recommend you go in there and, and poke around, ask questions, also get get a good blood work done, and then maybe uh, present that to them and see uh, what they have to say. So uh, I, I would look into that. And then the other thing that I would uh, dive into a little bit is your programming. So you, you, I see you do a five by five, kind of a, a what you call a bro split that a trainer, it sounds like a trainer or somebody gave to you. How long have you been uh, running that routine for? Um, if I look back the last six months, which is really the six months where I've done weight training, before that I wouldn't count it as weight training yeah, at all. It's time um, to switch out of that and try something different. Yes. So yeah, those, Tony, yeah. I put you in MAPS, maps anabolic, anabolic or MAPS performance uh, right now is what I would do. It's, it's time to change up your routine. That's that's a, that's a long time to be doing kind of the same thing. And what's exciting is uh, because you're on kind of a traditional bro split, uh, MAPS anabolic is a, a lot different than that. And I think that will actually send a nice signal for your body to adapt and build some more muscle. So that alone with you, uh, you know, probably reverse dieting and trying to in increase calories over this time and get that metabolism, I think the it will serve you really well. And then getting your blood work, I think, those are a couple things that I would first like to address. I mean, it could be a whole host of different things that we can do to help you. But to Sal's original point, um, I would also tell you that hey, we're we're doing good, man. You're 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 on a, a good track right now. Um, if we were trying to speed it up or make sure we don't hit a hard plateau, the two things that I would probably look at is the programming, making sure that I'm phasing you out every four weeks or so to the way your training looks, so you're. Your body is consistently having to adapt to something new. That that'll be a, a good signal for it. And then the other thing, I would just you know get a, a deep dive 
uh, from like a hormone therapist just to make sure your hormones are all balanced and we're doing well there. Uh, those two things, I think, uh, will, will keep you yeah. going pretty and, well. You, of course, and you know, you listened to that episode, but uh, I want to recap some of the important points of it. You know, make sure your protein intake is high, and don't be afraid to eat a little bit in a surplus. I know it can be frustrating if you see the scale move up a little it bit, is. especially from where you came from. But remember the bigger picture. Uh, I think you have already very positive. You've already added 200 calories. And like I said, when I painted the context, that's significant. That's a significant change in your metabolic rate. Um, you're, you can you can keep moving in that direction. You just got to trust the process and kind of try to allow, try not to allow those those insecurities, which we all have, right? But try not to allow your insecurities to drive you in the wrong direction, which is you know kind of what got you here in the first place. So, so high protein, slow increase in the calories, change the routine. We're going to send you MAPS Anabolic if you don't have it. I'd love to hear from you six months from now. I, I feel like if you do the right things in six months, we should be able to get your, your metabolic rate up at least another couple hundred, probably more like four or 500 well, more get calories. Well, get into that Mind Pump Hormone Forum. We're in there active uh, daily. So if you get in there and uh, talk with us and talk to the doctors, we can all kind of keep an eye on you and, and track and and uh, give you any sort of feedback that we possibly can on this journey. Super. Thanks, gentlemen. I appreciate it. No problem, man. <laughs> yeah, this this process can take a little while. I, I had... Um, I had one lady I remember actually talked about her in the resistance training revolution, but it took us almost a year, you know, mm -hmm. and she, hers was different, right? She wasn't, she didn't lose a lot of weight, but she, but she had damaged herself, quote unquote, damaged herself through repetitive competitions, bikini and, and figure and overtraining like crazy. But at the end of that year, it was so significant. And then of course, later on, I, you know, I would see this person and train with them and eventually they became a trainer a year later, two years later, three years later. She would tell me how, and it took me so long to convince her to move in this direction. But then when she did, obviously everything worked out. I remember three years later, she'd come up to me and be like, it's so weird. Mm -hmm. I used to just eat anything off the menu before and gain a pound. She goes, now it's like I can't gain weight. Like I just eat as much as I, I can and my metabolism is roaring. It just takes a little bit of time. Well, and this is why the whole process of losing weight uh, we try and highlight like how we would direct that because it really makes a substantial yeah. difference in terms of like how long that takes, you know, and how long you've been sort of depriving your body, uh, you know, of nutrients and, and building it and focusing on building the body, uh, you know, is a, is a much better approach. But the, the good news is that you can, you can definitely get back to that, that, that place where you have adequate amount of calories, you feel good, energetic and strong. And you know, it just takes a little bit of time. I, I really hope he takes the advice and go gets his blood work done because yeah, that could be a big a 48 right? year old client who has lost over a hundred of pounds through tons of movement and calorie restriction for an extended period of That's time. That's a prime recipe for absolutely. You know, hormone issues. So there's a very good chance that he could have some, lower levels of testosterone, maybe thyroid stuff going on. Um, and mm -hmm. if he hasn't had that checked out, um, I would, that being said, he's, you know, it, seeing some positive things already, but it could be, he could be seeing even better results than what he's already seeing potentially if the, if his hormone balance is off at all. So hopefully he takes the advice, Tony, you go get that blood work, take advantage of that free form that we have and the brilliant minds that we have in there helping people out. Uh, and and uh, to take their advice because they obviously know a lot more than we do. Our next caller is Dustin out of uh, Toronto, Canada. Dustin, what's up? How can we help you? Hey, um, all right. So I guess I'll start with uh, just giving a uh, quick background. So um, I'm about five foot ten, 165 pounds. So um, been doing uh, maps aesthetic on and off for the past year, and uh, I do a lot of stationary biking and biking about five or six days a week. So over the past year, I'd say I put on about five pounds of uh, relatively, I guess, muscle for the most part. Um, and now going into the next year, <clears throat> excuse me, looking to uh, kind of up it a bit more, um, trying to put on a bit more weight. So I'm eating about 3,200 calories a day, give or take between that and 3,400. Um, so just yeah, looking to kind of step it up next year or moving forward. And uh, I'm kind of at a sticking point for the past couple months, I'd say. So my weight's pretty much stayed relatively around the same. So just wanting to add hopefully about like another 10 pounds of muscle in a year's time would be nice, um, give or take as well. So just kind of looking for some advice in terms of, you know, should I change my program, eat more, 
um, maybe move less. Yeah. Just not really sure where to go. Yeah, Dustin. So two things that will probably make a, a, a more immediate change. One is as amazing as Maps Aesthetic is. I know it's switch great. Switch out of that to Animal. Yeah, it's time to switch to another program because you've been key, you're doing the same thing over and over again. Not so. only that, but that's actually one of our highest volume programs. Mm -hmm. And because you're already doing so much biking, uh, you don't need that. And especially if your goal is to pack on some muscle, a, a lower volume program like Maps Anabolic and uh, would would serve you better in the first place. So yeah. not to mention what Sal's saying that you've been doing it for an extended period of time, so your body's pretty well adapted. Uh, yeah, because so, that that alone will make a difference, yeah, and I, I think those calories you're eating will get you know because if the signal to build muscle isn't there, mm -hmm. then you can eat all the calories you want. It's not gonna it's not gonna happen. So you need to change the signal a little bit. So Maps Anabolic would be great. Even Maps Performance or Split would be good. But I think Anabolic's probably a better switch. And then uh, cut your biking down a little bit. You don't have to eliminate it, but you're doing it five days a week. I'd cut it down to two days a week. Those two things alone with your current calories will probably result in muscle gain. Now, if you want to throw calories on top of that, it'll happen a little faster. But I think that's probably the, those are probably the most, for me, the most obvious changes you can make that will give you the biggest uh, return. I mean, I think, I think you make the decision based off of, I think what's, all of them are true, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Changing the program, increasing calories or reducing movement, and all of them should result in seeing a, a, a movement in the, the positive direction you're trying to go, which is building muscle. Uh, you can you can do a lot of one of them or you can do a nice blend of all three, right? So you could actually, you could reduce biking by only one or two days, mm -hmm. increase uh, calories and switch program and you would see great results. Or you can completely reduce yeah. biking and just switch over to MAPS Anabolic and see huge results. Or you can significantly increase calories. It would really... Uh, my, my answer to you would have to do a lot. To, what, what, what do you prefer? You know, so if you if I felt like you were a client and you go, man, Adam, it's hard for me to even get thirty two hundred calories. Well, then me telling you, hey, let's move up to four thousand calories is going to be a really tough feat. So then I might go the direction of, OK, well, let's change your program up and reduce your 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 cardio that you're doing. Well, maybe you go to me like, Adam, I just love biking. I don't I don't want to give it up at all. It's, it's a passion of mine and I enjoy it, but I still also want to build muscle. Then I say, OK, well. We got to boost those calories up and switch your programming up. So you've got a I lot think, of. I think that's for me. Okay. Like I like the biking, but I also want to, yeah, definitely like add some muscle mass as well. So I know I kind of want to dip into several different things, and I also want to kind of avoid the significant fat gain. So yeah, yeah, just I, that new stimulus. I mean, yeah. going going into uh, a different phase where I, I mean, have you ever done one to three reps, and that was the focus of just pure. Uh, strength driven exercise, you know, workouts. And that was like your, your entire goal was just to get strong and then rest. No, I've never done like significant rest periods. I think like the most I've done is maybe like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. that, that new stimulus alone is it, watch how that impacts you and, and stay with it. And, uh, I think that it's just, it's mentally challenging for people to get out of their mm -hmm. comfort zone with that, but you know, trust in it and, and really like do it to the T. Yeah. We'll, we'll send you maps anabolic. Okay. Dustin. All right. Resist. And like, I want to just re pile on to what Justin said, because he's right. Uh, the hardest part for you is going to be, you know, telling somebody uh, who's only rested 30 seconds to 45 seconds, maybe a minute at most, that I want you to yeah. sit and rest for three minutes. <laughs> just seem like an eternity. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to seem like this is silly. This is a waste of my time. So uh, I'm going to, we're going to try and stay ahead of this and in front of it for you and be like, rest those full three minutes. Give yourself adequate rest, way more than you ever have, and just and focus on every set you come back to, trying to be stronger and stronger under the bar. All right. Cool. All right, cool. man. Thanks for calling. All right. Yeah, thanks. Love you guys. You guys are great. Thanks so much for everything. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Love Justin. you too. I almost did that. <laughs> I almost said that too. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, what's funny about this is that when you actually look at the amount of calories that your body needs when it wants to build another pound of muscle, yeah. is not much. Right. It really isn't. So I know, and especially because he's already eating so much, a lot of times we're like, oh, let's throw more calories. If your body wants to build muscle, so 
oftentimes you don't need to jump your calories that much at all, or sometimes you don't. You just build that extra muscle. Well, I mean, that's that's why yeah. I made that point of like he could do like a subtle tweak of yeah. all of them, right? You could switch the programming, mm -hmm. just barely reduce the amount of cardio you're doing, just barely, like maybe drop a day yeah. or yeah. Uh, or two on that, and maybe add a hundred calories, and that could yep. completely dramatically shift. I uh, like that combo, right? right. That's a nice, and it's not really dramatic. He's not. I'm not saying you got to go way off the cycling because he loves doing it. Yeah. And all you're doing is switching the programming. And I'm not asking you to eat a tremendous amount more, just 100 more calories. Probably more. a more successful approach because the abrupt turn a totally. lot of times doesn't stick. Right. Yeah, but that changing that signal, you know, it's uh, it's in, in this particular case, I think it's going to make the biggest difference. Like lift differently. When your body wants to build, it, it tends to build. Our next caller is Caitlin from British Columbia. Caitlin, how's it going? How can we help you? Hi. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's so cool to like be able to ask you guys a question in live time. Um, before I get to my question, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for the work that you do and the information that you share. I've been listening to Mind Pump for since I started weightlifting two and a half years ago, and I have learned so much from you guys. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. Rad. Thank you. Um, so my question is, I listened to your podcast with Jordan Shallow. Um, the muscle science one. And I found that super fascinating and I really like um, Shallow's approach. And so I've been thinking about taking his prescript level one course. Um, but I wanted to hear from you guys, like your advice on if there's any other online programs that would maybe like cover some of the same principles that Shallow does that, you know, like the biomechanics and the anatomy and the programming and working with injuries um that are like would be comparable and for context i'm not a certified trainer but that's something that i'm thinking of maybe pursuing and jordan shallow's course doesn't offer that certification yet so i wanted to hear from you guys because i know you're always talking about you know like well the fitness industry will tell you this but like this is what's actually true and what you should actually be doing so yeah i wanted to hear from you guys yeah, the DeFranco CPPS. Oh, that's a good one, right? All day long. What I, I can't, I can't promote it enough. Uh, only because there's a lot of um, certifications out there that are recommended as kind of introductory, like NASM or uh, you know a lot of um, you know ACE and, and things that'll just at least be a national recognized certification. But CPPS, I think, of all of the ones that I've sat through and gone through myself breaks it down on the most applicable level. So it's just, it gives you tools to then actually go and train a client and feel confident in that. Yeah. Caitlin, are you going to be a trainer in a big box gym or online no. coach? Like what's your goal? No, it'd be online. Okay. Look, okay. So this makes a big difference because if you were going to do, if you wanted to be a trainer in a big box gym, then you're going to have to get a national certification. But since you don't, or you're not going to, um, you don't. So, we can just recommend the ones that we think are the most valuable. For online coaching, um, NCI, exceptional. Exceptional certification for online coaches. Yep. They also spend a lot of time teaching you how to build a business, which other certifications don't do at all. And if you're going to be an online coach, you need to learn how to build your business online. Otherwise, you can want to help as many people as you want. But if you can't build a business around it, well, then you're not going to be able to do it. Uh, Jordan Shallow's Prescript, excellent. Yep. Excellent certification. Um, Joe DeFranco CPPS certification, another excellent certification. Those would be the three that I would recommend off the top. I don't think national certification is a great investment if you don't need the national certification because I know CPPS and Prescript will cover mm -hmm. what you're going to learn from NASM and then some. And then NCI is going to help you with the nutrition component, uh, nutrition coaching component and the building your business component. And if you did like... NCI and Prescript or, you know, a combination of those, you're going to be in really, really good position to build yourself a nice online coaching business. Oh, I think the, I think those three are perfect. Um, the order I would do them in, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I would go either CPPS first or NCI, NCI first. Yeah, depending on your um, Yeah, I think sh Shallows to me would be kind of the, the pinnacle of those three, right? So Super his, comprehensive. Yeah, his is, uh, I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're more into the nerdy stuff, you're going you're gonna to love his the most because I think he goes real deep uh, and that he's absolutely brilliant and that's why we partnered with him. Uh, so I definitely recommend that one for sure. Uh, you'll get more practical stuff, I think, from 
NCI and CPBS. I think those ones will, and probably the most general for training clients would be Joe DeFranco's, the CPBS. Uh, but the probably the most applicable to like training online clients would be NCI. Yeah, so. they're, they're going to really teach you how to build your business too. Doug, we have links for NCI and Prescript, right? Places we can send her to? Yeah, so uh, for Prescript, it's mindpumpl1.com. You can go over there and sign up for um, NCI. We do have our, our you know weekly coaching that we're doing, so that's under mindpumpnci.com. Okay. I believe we actually have a link for CPPS as well. I'll, I'll look for that. Okay, yeah. So those those would be the the best ones. And then here's what else I think is going to... Let me ask you this real quick. Before I do what I'm about to do, I want to make sure I, I make the right decision here, Caitlin. What made you want to be a trainer or a coach? Um. Well, I have some people that I'm like unofficially helping right now because I have a home gym. And they there's things that come up that I feel like not equipped to help them with. And I really want to be able to help them in like a safe way to get stronger and not have injuries that are keeping them from doing things in life. So that's, that's a big, that's the biggest reason why. Okay. And what has fitness done for you? Like, obviously you, you work out and you found a passion for it. Like why, why do you want to make this as a career from that standpoint? Um, because I've really seen its importance and the value and how it's really allowed me to do things in life way better. And like without injuries or back pain, that's really common. And it's helped my, um, like my mind and it's, it's helped in like a lot of areas. And then there's a lot of, um, spiritual lessons too in it. I find that I can learn. And so and then when I see other people that are maybe hindered because they've got injuries or because they're not fit, and I just want to be able to help them be able to not be hindered like that. Okay. Well, you know, our favorite people in the world are, are coaches and trainers. I mean, we've, we've made, uh, that's not a secret. We know what you, the, the kind of work that you do and the impact that you make on people's lives, far more impactful than what we do on the show. We reach a lot of people, but we're not making the impact that good coaches are. And so- uh, anytime I get the opportunity, I want to equip a, a a potential trainer or coach with as with as as much information and good stuff as possible to really help you do a good job. So here's what I'm going to do, okay? Because we also have things that can help you out, mm -hmm. and we have really good workout programs. We've we've got a lot of experience. You can learn from our workout programs. So here's what I'm going to give you, Caitlin. If you promise to pursue this as a career and really do a good job uh, as a coach or trainer, I'm going to send you are MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic Bundle. That's the RGB bundle. Those three cornerstone routines will show you some good general workout programming. And then I'm also going to send you the Prime Bundle because MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro are probably the two most valuable programs that we have for trainers and coaches. They're going to teach you uh, applicable correctional exercise, which is going to bring tremendous value to your potential client. So we're going to send all of that over to you, but I want you to pay it forward. I want you to pursue this and do a damn good job. Okay. I want you to go change some lives. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much. No problem, Caitlin. Thanks yeah. for calling. Okay. Bye. Th bye. I love hearing that. I know I, I, I just gave away a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. ask you guys. Yes. It's I, almost Christmas. So. I, you know, I love it because, and she's young, she's 21. And, and look, here's the truth. The truth is, it's a hard job. I don't mean a hard job like uh, it's hard to help people. That's hard too. It's hard to make a career. It's yeah. not an easy job to it's make. Hard to get started for sure. It's just, it's just, you know. Yeah, but here's the deal though. Show me somebody who has all those programs, listens to this show, has those three certifications. Oh, they're odds of success. And I'll show you, I'll show yeah, you a dude. fucking damn good trainer. Yeah, yeah you yeah. show easy. me someone who has all those certifications, listens to our show consistently, has our programs yeah. as blueprints, and you got to be. You got to be pretty bad, actually, not to be successful. <laughs> those, I mean, those are, I think, some of the best certifications out there. You're listening to us on the show uh, to help you apply it to your clients and learn from all the mistakes yep. we made in two decades. Uh, and then you actually have blueprints on how to create programs right in front of you. Um, and she she doesn't sound like she's quiet and shy. Yeah. She sounds like she's got enough personality to talk to someone. She could be very successful. Well, what I love about it, it's all complimentary. You know, even those other certifications we mentioned, like yeah, each totally. one of them fills a need. 
And yeah. uh, if you really, if she does her, her due diligence and does, you know, in fact, like sign up and for those certifications, she's going to set herself way above the rest. Yeah. I mean, think back to when we all first started. I mean, what a difference would it have made had you had those resources, yeah. had you had the podcast, like, you know, like we have uh, for these trainers and coaches, and had you had these programs available, like, I mean, I was full of piss and vinegar, and, and you, couldn't have, you couldn't have stopped me with a gun. I was going to do it anyway, but it took me a long time to get good. Like, I sucked for a long time because totally. yeah. I didn't have access to these types yeah, of resources. Figuring so. it out. I mean, that's, a, um, that's quite a bit of an investment to do all of those, right? But I'll, I'll tell you right now, um, the, that investment right there, I would take a, a trainer with those three certifications, those programs, that experience, listening to us for that all day over a PhD in our field. That's how 100%. that's how powerful that. So if you're listening and you're a potential coach or you're just getting into the space, and maybe, it's way cheaper than a PhD. Oh yeah, wait. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about the total investment for if you have all of our programs yeah, plus yeah. those three certifications, yeah. you're still under five grand. Yep. You know, to, and it's uh, a write off anyway when you build your business. Yeah, you can and you don't need to do it all in one shot. You chip away at it, right? Yep. So, but you if you can accumulate all that over the next year or two or so, um, watch out. I guarantee the uh, the success that you'll have as a trainer is uh, far greater than somebody who just went through, you know, six years of schooling uh, in our field. Uh, that, that The applicable knowledge that you'll get from all That's that. That's the key right there. Yes. Absolutely. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and, and check out all of our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost all of your fitness goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal and Adam is at mindpumpadam.